you gotta stick around and watch this video because throughout it, I'm gonna be talking about something pretty exciting that I'm gonna be giving away. And it might be something sweet, like a new. Welcome to episode 16 of Heart to Heart. Boom, 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 boom. That should have been 16 fingers. My name's Ben Hartley, and on today's episode, we're gonna talk about why I shoot professionally on a mirrorless camera system, specifically the Fuji X-T3. Let's do it. Today, you guys, we're talking about why I switched to mirrorless. I was on the Canon system, shooting SLRs on the on the uh, Canon 5D Mark III. The Mark IV had just come out, and that's when I switched to Fuji for the first time. I not only went to a mirrorless camera system, I went to a crop sensor mirrorless camera system, and I want to tell you guys why. I'm holding here today a Fuji X-T2, but have no fear, I've pre-ordered five Fuji X-T3s. I've got a lot of Fuji X-T3s on the way, and I'm super jazzed about it. I've gone through two full seasons shooting professionally in the X-T2 and the X-T3 just has me so jazzed. I want to talk first generally about mirrorless, what's exciting about it, what's sexy about it, and why I've made that move, and then why the X-T3 has me... I'm not going to censor myself. Uh... <laughs> I should, I should, has me excited. All right, so here's the deal. For starters, uh, the some of like the biggest wins in mirrorless, it's Look at this thing. It's adorable. This is so freaking cute. This this could fit in my pocket. Like if I had a pocket, this could fit in it. Uh, it's just so small. And so it, uh, on the mirrorless camera systems, they're smaller, they are lighter, which in turn means that you as a photographer get to be faster, right? There's just less bulk to be hauling around. There's also like less health problems. I don't know about you, but shooting weddings for like five seasons in now, uh, my hand, literally I started to get like carpal tunnel. Other people will have back problems, hip problems, um, but for me it was actually a lot in my hand. And so this has been a, a, been a godsend for it. Now, I'm not, I, I don't have the grip on right now. When I throw the grip on, it gets a little bit bigger, but man, it's still complete night and day. Let's keep going. Other reasons that I really enjoy mirrorless. Um, uh, one would be the fact that there is an EVF, the electronic viewfinder. This thing is so freaking cool and mirrorless has caught up. Now for the longest time, there were issues with the EVF. It would feel a little trippy. The refresh rate wasn't there. What the EVF means is, it's like what you see is what you get. And when I look through this, I'm not looking through my lens. I'm looking through an electronic viewfinder that's simulating the exact shot that I'm gonna get. And sometimes there'd be almost a little flicker to it, or you'd click the shutter and you wouldn't quite see exactly what it is. Now it's per it's like near perfect. It is near perfect, the EVF. And I love that when I walk into a scene, there's no more like you're leaving the church after the bride and groom, just you were in the dark ceremony and they, and they leave out the, the doors and they open the doors wide open. You're still shooting because you're just like on a roll. There's no more like extremely overexposed shots. Because now if those shots are extremely overexposed, guess what you're seeing in the viewfinder? An extremely overexposed shot. So unless you're completely not paying attention, you're gonna know it to change your exposure settings. Uh, it's really, it's, and it's really fun. Uh, same thing with the fact that uh, with my with my little, uh, what, what are these things called, Michael? LCD screens? Nice. So with my little, <laughs> with my little LCD screen, um, in combination with this, like I, you can do a lot more stuff shooting like up overhead, you can tilt that thing down, conversely shooting down low, I can hold it down low and shoot it, I can like shoot around corners, do some like little snipe and weird stuff, but I find myself using this screen all all the time. Okay, next thing, the advantage of mirrorless is the complete silent mode. Now I know all these camera systems, they advertise silent shutter, but like this is like no, like this is mute. This is completely no sound at all. You can switch it over to the ele the uh, electronic shutter uh, and it is awesome. It's actually come in handy. There's been a couple situations where I'd, have a, I'd had a couple that was, um, maybe they were saying a prayer together and I was able to go into that completely mute mode, completely mute. It's only as loud as I'm loud breathing and and like really get in present and be like up in there. Now I'm an aggressive shooter. I shoot wide and tight, you know, 35 millimeters on my camera majority of the day. And so for me to get up into those moments and to be able to just be rattling off clicks like a mother effer uh, in the middle of like a really sincere prayer, just like, just like this. Can you hear this? I can't hear. 
I just took off like 30 pics uh, over a bride's shoulder, you know, like while someone's praying for him. I don't want to sugarcoat this video. There are cons to mirrorless. Number one, the con is like lens selection. Uh, mirrorless cameras, they haven't been around for like near, th like SLRs, like three decades almost. Like, like, th like, mirrorless cameras they don't have that history and so the lens selection uh is not there that's one con the second con uh would be uh, battery life, Michael, right? So battery life is the other one. You know, on a wedding day, we're usually going through about seven batteries, uh, typically for us. Uh, and so seven batteries, uh, that's a lot. Uh, it's just, yeah, that's a deal. And the reason why is because you've got such a small compact system, so the batteries uh, aren't necessarily as large, but also you're, you're powering a lot more stuff with the EVF uh, constantly running, that screen constantly running, uh, as well as this back screen running more often. So uh, battery life isn't fully there. These are problems that I am willing to live with. Let's talk about the Fuji X-T3 because I am jazzed about this thing. Having shot two seasons on the X-T2 and loving it, the X-T3 solves so many of the frustrations that I had with the X-T2 because once again, I had frustrations. This is not like the end all camera. This is the X-T2 in my hands right now. The, like This wasn't like the golden camera. Like There's cameras that are technically better tech specs better, but I still prefer the X-T2. Uh, so let me kind of explain uh, some of the things that I'm jazzed about for the X-T3. For starters, let me tell you my biggest frustration with the X-T2, and that would be focusing, right? There, the focusing uh, for the X-T2 had a couple issues. Number one was the phase detection wasn't there across the entire sensor. Uh, on the X-T3, you have uh, uh, phase detection on every single, uh, uh, point on the sensor. The entire sensor is covered. Not only that, but the low light focus on the X-T2 was a struggle. The low light focus was only at uh, under one stop uh, EV for, for exposure, right? So you had negative one stop that you could shoot. And so as long as you had a, you know, like a decently lit shot, but as soon as you start getting into anything that's like much darker than one stop underexposed, your camera would struggle. Right, and there's there's a fair amount of manually focusing that I would do. The nice thing is though, with mirrorless, you can do focus peaking, uh, which is super nice on manual. Um, but with the X-T3, you now have up to three stops uh, of exposure to go while still uh, having the full benefits of a full phase detection sensor across everything. That means your shot can be three stops underexposed. Three stops underexposed and you're still gonna be focusing like, da, 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 like snappy as all get out. Uh, the eye, uh, so we also have eye tracking with the full phase detection, which is gonna be incredible. Uh, and I understand that Sony's had eye detection across the full, so I get it. Uh, I'm excited for the X-T3 to be there because the thing that I wanna talk about now and why I chose Fuji over a Sony system is twofold. Number one, one of the reasons why is ergonomically, I feel like I'm holding a camera when I hold a Fuji. I feel like I'm holding a toy when I'm holding a Sony. And I know that may get some hate, but I just think build quality wise, there's just like, there's a metal feel with with Fuji. Even the dials, it's brought like a new life. Like it's made photography fun again. Made for Mappa. Let's get a Mappa hat. Make photography fun again. It's made for like these dials like that. We, let's not, let's not, let's not do that. These dials, these like metal dials, right? Like this is so fun. Uh, like there's something that's tactile about this and it feels right when it's in your hands, it feels right. Uh, I like we shoot on the, the Sony um, a7S II for video a lot of times and it just feels cheap and it doesn't quite feel ergonomically like it's all there. And so I, that's why I really enjoy it. Um, the other reason why that I've chosen uh, to choose the, the the Fuji system over something like a Sony is the fact that uh, I'm on a crop sensor. And that means that everything gets to be so much more compact, tight, that my lens selection, like my lenses are like this. I, I love and adore this. Uh, it's so beneficial for me, again, talking about um, having my entire wedding kit uh, in like a single little tiny bag like this big on me on a day. I really enjoy having that light, having that speed, having that nimbleness. Um, and then along with that, understanding that I shoot wide and tight aggressively, that this is a very unobtrusive camera system. And so when I get up in someone's grill, 
uh, and I get in there present with a photograph, it's a lot less obtrusive and alarming, uh, or even to be able to kind of shoot from the hip with flip my screen up and just da, 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 da. like it's a lot less obtrusive and, and kind of it, it keeps people in their in their space in their emotion in their own zone. Um, I don't pop their bubble as easily as when I'm rolling up with a larger camera system with larger lenses. Um, which you typically be kind of defaulting to on a full frame uh, camera. So, uh, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about a few other things. Video, well, um, before I go to video, maybe we should talk about EVF a little bit more. There's over a million dots more on the X-T3 than there are on the X-T2. Now, I've never felt uh, any sense of lack of sharpness when looking through the EVF, but now we've got a million dots more, and so it's gonna be significantly sharper in the EVF. Um, and then video-wise, you guys, on the X-T3, you are gonna get 10 bit 4K 60 frames a second video, which is awesome. 420 uh, is gonna be your codec. When you do an HDMI out, you're gonna be able to get 422, uh, which is, it's, it's, that is so rad. This is gonna be so phenomenal. In combination with the eye tracking, uh, the full sensor phase detection, it's, it's really gonna be incredible what you're gonna be able to get uh, with video. I'm like, I'm jazzed about that. We're shooting all of our commercial video uh, stuff on our Fuji system and we couldn't be happier with it. Uh, we've got a new processor in the X-T3. The new processor means that it's gonna get readouts on uh, both your exposure, but more importantly to me, if you can't tell the theme of this video, uh, the focus speed. It's going to actually get be 1.5 times uh, more readouts on your focus, right? It's gonna be 1.5 times faster in regards to like, hey, adjusting focus, snappier focus. And again, for video, this is gonna be so important as you're doing that continuous tracking, that eye tracking, it's gonna constantly be, be, be checking 1.5 times faster. It's gonna be really great. Uh, great. Also, there's gonna be a new film simulation. It's not new for the X-H1, but in the X-T3, they're gonna put a new film simulation in here, which we should talk, we should talk for a hot second about these film simulations because, and actually I should probably go back to Sony while talking about this, but we get a new film simulation that's gonna really help with grading video footage. Uh, the new film simulation is called the Eterna Film Simulation. It's gonna be great for grading. And so let's talk about film simulations because the great thing about Fuji, like when you think Fuji, what do you think? Think about like Fuji, like the actual film, and you would get these beautiful films. Back in the day, like you would you would choose a certain film stock because of its color profile that it contained. And that Fuji 400H was a gorgeous film stock. I've shot Fuji 400H for a long time now. And I love that the Fuji X-T3 and the X-T2 have these films uh, these film presets built in, where you can be shooting, and it's not gonna bake it into the raw, you're still gonna have your raw shot, but when you go and you're actually viewing your EVF, when you're shooting live on a day, you're viewing it and you're shooting in that film stock, and it is so awesome. Uh, and so the film stocks are just incredible, and this is one of the big things that I struggled with with Sony. People always ask me, why am I on Fuji instead of Sony? The color profiles on Sony kinda suck. They just kind of suck. <laughs> they just do. It's your, especially with video. It's really hard to grade. I find uh, the Fuji color profiles to be just really fun to shoot with because I'm getting it live in my EVF. I'm viewing it as that film stock. My raws, it's not baked in, so I still get to get my full raw profile to edit with. And in video, uh, there's this great films, a great color grading uh, when grading footage on the XT3. Uh, last thing with video is before in the X-T2, you needed a battery grip to take advantage of a few things that you no longer need the battery grip for. On the X-T2, you needed a battery grip to take advantage of a longer 4K record times over 10 minutes. You no longer need that. Now you can go up to 30 minutes without a battery grip. You also need a battery grip for the headphone jack. Now that headphone jack is in the, the camera itself. Uh, which is fantastic. And then prior, you needed the battery grip for a boost mode to take advantage of some of these things. Uh, that's gonna be built in. Actually, I don't know that for sure. Is that gonna be built in the X3, all the, all the boost mode stuff? Uh, we'll, we'll let you know if that's gonna be built in. But for video, all the advantages are all right here. You don't need the battery grip to take advantage of those on the X-T3. Super stoked about that. Third, up to, like up to 30 frames a second is insane. It's absolutely nuts. I can't even imagine a situation like I get like a race at like, like sports photography, 30 frames a second. God, that's insane. And I'll, uh, you know, I'll end with this thought. Uh, 
it's got two card slots. So that's kind of like, seems to be a big deal these days. It, it does have two card slots, which I'll tell you what, my definition of a professional camera in 2018, in 2018, because understand this, things change, my definition of a professional camera in 2018 is that it has two card slots. That's what, that's what it is. It's not the sensor size. It's not it's a full frame, a medium format. A uh, crop sensor is does have two card slots. That's, that's how I view a professional camera. And so as a professional, if you're not shooting with a camera with two card slots in 2018, then you should revisit. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. I think you should re revisit yourself. Um, it's a crop sensor. So what? You wanna see some dope shots that I've been photographing a crop sensor? Go check out stylestorycreative.com. As a matter of fact, let me just link that up. Go check it out, because I'm telling you what, we're kicking ass and we're taking names and we're shooting on a crop sensor. You guys, my name's Ben Hartley. Thank you for checking out why I think you'll be shooting mirrorless and specifically why I think you should be shooting on the X-T3. And guess what? I'm gonna be giving one away. Uh, down in the link below in the description, I'm gonna give away an X-T3. Make sure you check that out. I'm not kidding, I'm giving away an X-T3. Go do it now, I'll send it to you. Bye, everybody.